Whoa, we're cooking one of these suckers today. We're not cooking this one. We're going to release him at the end of the video. It's time for you to go home, buddy. So stay tuned for that. No more wasting time. Let's get into this. Today, we're cooking turtle sauce pecan, one of our favorite recipes. First, wash your turtle and chop it up into bite-sized pieces. Remove all the fat. Turtle fat is rancid. At the end of the video, we wrote a quick piece on the history of eating turtle and why you don't see it as much today. Stay tuned. You want to season your turtle generously? Today, we're using our Creole seasoning. We'll make sure you get it cover on all sides. Make sure you completely coat the bottom of your Dutch oven with oil. Once your oil gets hot, you want to put your turtle meat in. You want to cook until brown. Cook until the majority of the water is out. The taste of turtle meat is often compared to chicken. In fact, a large snapping turtle's meat has several distinct parts, each reminding you of beef, chicken, pork, bill, and fish. Once the water is boiled out and it's brown, you want to transfer it to another pan. Reduce the heat from medium high to medium low before you start the roux. Once you remove the turtle, use the remaining oil and add a half cup more. Then you add a cup of flour. You don't want to add all your flour at one time. You want to add it gradually. You don't want it to clump together. Scrape all those brown bits off the bottom of the pot. Add more Creole seasoning once your flour and oil are blended together. You don't want to let it sit too long without stirring. It will scorch. Like my dad always says, if you scorch the roux, you're through. Now you're going to chop your vegetables. While I'm preparing the vegetables, my dad is stirring the roux until it's a caramel brown color. If you're cooking alone, you may want to prepare the vegetables before you get started. Chop your vegetables into really fine pieces. You don't want any chunky vegetables in your roux. Separate the whites and greens of your green onions. Whites go in the roux, greens are for garnish, but I always throw a few in anyway. Once your roux gets to a caramel brown color, you wanna add your vegetables. Once you add the veggies in, it will stop your roux from browning further. Two tablespoons of minced garlic. Stir the vegetables until they're wilted. Once your vegetables are wilted, you wanna go ahead and add your liquid. We're using beef broth today. Water will work, but I love the richness of the beef broth. Add some red wine. Your tomato sauce, diced tomatoes with green chili. You want to stir that around until it's blended up real good. At this point in the process, if you don't like the thickness of your dish, you can always add more liquid. Add in your sugar. This will help cut the acidity of the tomato. Once your liquid comes to a boil, mixes it all together and marries, you want to add your turtle meat. Now you're going to want to reduce your heat to simmer. Cover it, stir every 20 minutes or so, making sure nothing is sticking to the bottom. Do this for about two hours until your turtle is fork tender. For this recipe, you gotta make your rice with a cast iron. We're cooking up some parish rice in a cast iron pot. Parish rice is grown a stone's throw away from us down in South Louisiana. It's got 53% more protein than standard white rice. And because of this, it has the lowest glycemic index of any other rice on the market in the United States. Don't forget, always salt your rice. Before we get to the taste test. Wow, that's delicious. We've got to pair it with a good red wine and a perfect appetizer. Our appetizer today is a delicious shrimp stuffed with crab meat. We get these pre-made from a famous Louisiana restaurant called Rachel's down in Lafayette, Louisiana. Find them linked in our bio. As you can see, it was a really big hit with our family. Wow! That's good. We're pairing this meal with a 2019 Flambeau Zinfandel out there in Sonoma, California, owned by a Louisiana native. Only 489 cases of this wine was produced. It's a very rich wine that pairs perfectly with this dish. Now that it's fork tender, time to serve it up. During the age of exploration in the 15th to 17th centuries, turtles were a primary food source in the Caribbean. European sailors in the West Indies discovered sea turtles that weighed a lot and had versatile uses. They realized that turtles could survive for months at sea, providing a backup food source during shortages. The British particularly cherished turtle meat that eventually became more affordable in the 1800s. As European settlers arrived in America, they introduced turtle-based recipes. America's abundant turtle population made it a common dish. However, by the 20th century, turtle meat's popularity dwindled. With the rise of convenient mm. food options like TV dinners and canned meats around World War II, time consuming turtle preparation became obsolete, leading to its decline in American diets. In 2023, turtle has almost completely disappeared from the diets of most Americans, with the exception of some pockets of Louisiana and Pennsylvania. <laughs> Think of a robust, beefy flavor with a unique cool. texture, somewhat similar to squid or alligator. Some even say it reminds them of rich 
seafood like lobster or crab. And occasionally, you might catch hints of fishy flavors like mackerel or trout. Given its rich taste, nutritional value, and its historical significance in American cooking, we find it meaningful to preserve this great dish. Many of you may not want to give turtle sauce pecan a try, but to all those brave culinary explorers out there, trust us. This meal is absolutely delicious, safe to eat, and we can guarantee it will bring an extra spark to your next dinner. It's time for you to go home, buddy. Bye, little buddy. If you need some turtle, you can get it from us. And watch another video because that helps the algorithm.